Hello there and thank you for joining us for this week's WeatherQuest Farming Forecast. Before we kick off into the forecast, just a reminder that we still have a poll on our YouTube channel. It'll literally take 10 seconds, it's just one question. And all we want to know is from what area of interest that you're watching the farming forecast from, whether it be agriculture, livestock farming, or just general interest in weather. So if you've got a minute, please head over there. Um, like I said, it'll only take five seconds to fill out and it's uh, really valuable to us um, and you know how we tailor the farming forecast to you. So that'd be perfect if you could do that. So let's crack straight on into the forecast, take a look at the jet stream over the next few days. Uh, it's going to be quite active, you can see it here, running across the North Atlantic, pushing areas of low pressure and rain into western parts of the British Isles. To the southeast of that, it's going to draw a lot of mild air in across, particularly southeastern Britain, but pretty much everywhere is going to be quite mild for the next few days. You can see it remaining over western Britain, so a lot of rain piling in over western hills, before then that becomes a little bit more widespread, into the weekend and then actually it looks like we will draw something a little cooler in uh, by Sunday and into the early part of next week. So quite an unsettled week, quite mild, quite breezy as well with the jet stream close by to us for much of the time. So taking a look at that in a little bit more detail, this is Wednesday so you can already see how breezy it's looking with these fairly tight isobars right the way across the British Isles. Um, got this band of rain across Scotland and Ireland, that's going to move eastwards. It does stall generally across southern Scotland, northern England, Wales. You can see to the southeast of that it's pretty dry, quite a mild, breezy southwesterly flow there. So mild, dry, breezy in southeastern parts through until Thursday. A lot of rain you can see here across the western high ground areas, particularly across Wales, the Lake District, parts of southwest England. With that front basically stalling there, you can see it stays there for pretty much most of Wednesday. And Thursday but we do see something a little bit dry by Thursday in the northwest low pressure out here close to Iceland and that's just going to bring a few showers and sunny spells to those northwestern parts by Thursday but a lot of rain in these central areas so this is just one model's idea of how much rain might fall between now and the end of Thursday so by midnight on Thursday and into Friday you can see pretty dry in the southeast just a few bits and pieces of drizzle from some of that thicker cloud might just bring a couple of mil in a few spots but generally dry um, in these southeastern parts. You can see over the western high ground areas, we've got a lot of rain, particularly across the Lake District, parts of Snowdonia, southwest Wales. Some places could see perhaps sort of 80 to 100 millimetres of rain by the end of Thursday. So very wet for these areas, and then wet to the north and west of that, but not quite as much um, as some parts of these uh, parts of northwest England and Wales. So very wet, but quite a contrast to uh, the southeast by the end of Thursday. Now into Friday, we've still got this area of low pressure out to the northwest. This front is still in these central areas, but it does look like as we move through Friday, that's going to begin to shift eastwards. A lot of uncertainty as to how it develops over East Anglia, and we'll come on to that in just one second. But further west, you can see it clears. We've got quite a lot of showers, particularly around western coasts. There could be a few heavy thundery downpours in these parts, but a lot of sunny spells as well, particularly as you go further east into the inland areas. Uh, but yeah, this rain moving across eastern England during Friday, a lot of uncertainty as to how that develops and how heavy it becomes. You can see here, this is another model's idea of how this rain develops as it spreads north eastwards. And you can see some pretty heavy rain across particularly parts of Norfolk, the East Midlands, moving up into Yorkshire and around the Humber. So a lot of uncertainty to Friday regarding that area of rain. But either way, it looks like into Saturday, you see this is Saturday morning, it will have cleared out into the North Sea and things will turn a little bit drier as we see more sunny spells and showers for the rest of Saturday. So one to keep an eye on for Friday night and into Saturday for that rain, particularly across eastern England. So looking a little bit further ahead, you can see this model here taking that rain away to the east through Saturday. We're then basically left with this breezy west to southwesterly flow. Quite a few showers coming through for Saturday, particularly around western hills. I think they'll be more isolated the further east you are for Saturday, but there still could be a few sharp ones around, um, so one to keep an eye on. Um, the next tricky situation is going to be these developing areas of low pressure for Saturday night, moving in uh, into southwestern Britain initially, but then becoming more widespread through Sunday. So again, a lot of uncertainty for these lows. You can see this one's got several centres um, and pinning down exactly where they're, where they're going to track is going to be a little bit tricky until closer to the time. But either way, it looks like somewhere on Sunday, potentially it's going to see quite a lot of heavy rain. So this is just a, a still for midday on Sunday. This is four different models idea of how that area of low pressure might develop through Sunday. You can see the big differences in quite a few of these models as to exactly where the center of the low is 
and exactly where the heavier rain associated with that is. So again, a lot of uncertainty. There could be some quite strong winds on the southern edge of this low. You can see how tight the isobars are in some of these models. And there may well be some mild air wrapped up in some of these uh, lows um, in some of these models as well. So a lot of uncertainty for Sunday, but certainly it looks like somewhere is going to see some heavy rain, whether it's across the southeast or whether it's across more central areas, parts of Wales and northern England is uh, still a little bit up in the air. Uh, that's why it's important to stay on top of the forecast for uh, you know the next few days and how that might change and, and any developments uh, in the forecast for your area. So looking a little bit further ahead into next week, particularly with temperature, obviously in this southwesterly this week, we're going to see some pretty mild temperatures uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, highs of 17 or 18 degrees even in the southeast. And you can see that here in the, the temperature. This is the temperature at 850 hectopascals, which is generally representative of the type of air mass that we're in. So it's not the, the temperature of the air at the surface, but it is a, a, an indicator of what sort of air we're in. So 10 degrees here um, at that level is, is quite mild air. Um, you can see that for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pretty mild conditions, but actually as we go through the weekend into next week, there is a, a pretty notable cooling of that. We get uh, more cool air coming in from the northwest. It is going to turn quite a bit chillier. Um, you can see for Sunday some uncertainty here, and that's all to do with that area of low pressure that spreads through. Depending on the track of it, there might be some quite mild air briefly associated with that before that then clears out into the North Sea and we get the, the cooler air come back in again. So. There's generally this trend to cool through the rest of the week, the weekend and into early part of next week. Uh, but there might be a brief milder spell, particularly in the southeast, associated with that, that area of low pressure. Um, but the main cooler period looks like it comes the middle and end of next week, once we're properly into a, a cooler north or northwesterly flow, drawing air right down uh, from the Arctic. So turning quite chilly, could be that we see some frosts, uh, particularly over the high grounds, but a few other spots could see some frost as well locally. Uh, by the middle part of next week. And just to show the setup that's driving this through next week is, is what, what we've got here. Looks like high pressure is going to build in from the west. That area of low pressure that's bringing rain over the weekend is all going to shift out to the east. We get that whole upper trough shifting across eastern Europe. So you can see here with high pressure to the west, low pressure to the east, we're left with this cold northerly flow and that's just going to bring cold air across the British Isles into other parts of western Europe as well. So quite chilly. Um, you can see that here in the temperature anomaly. Below average temperatures across the UK, France, Ireland, parts of Spain, into some parts of Central Europe as well. Further east though, still milder uh, than average, milder than you'd expect for the time of the year um, with that, that trough over there and a more of a southerly flow of air, but turning quite chilly um, in western parts. Now the impact that that's going to have on the rainfall is as that trough moves east, a lot of unsettled weather across the bulk of central and eastern Europe. You can see these green colours here showing above average rainfall, so wetter than normal weather. Further east, you can see the UK and Ireland here mostly in the brown colours below average rainfall. But with that northerly, it may well be that coastal parts of the Irish Sea, Scotland, down the North Sea as well, and perhaps into East Anglia, do see quite a few showers. So actually coastal parts and areas near the coasts may be a little bit wetter than this looks, um, especially uh, parts of the, the northern um, northern parts of the UK and down the east coast as well. So the further inland you are, the likely drier it will be, and the closer to the coast, the more likely you are to see a few of those heavier showers. So with all that going on over the next few days, obviously with the milder, wetter conditions, then turning colder with the risk of frost, the risk of showers, the best way of staying on top of the forecast is to speak directly to one of our forecasters. They're available every day from 6 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. on the number shown um, at £1.55 a minute plus any network access charges. And they'll be able to talk you through the latest developments in the forecast, where the uncertainty is, how likely you are to see showers and things like that. So they're the best way of staying on top of the forecast in tricky situations. Now looking a little bit further ahead into the second week of November, it looks like that area of high pressure that was out to the west of us is going to begin to nudge a little bit further east, actually bringing slightly more settled weather to some western and northern parts. You can see still the hint of troughiness across Europe, these blue colours showing vaguely unsettled conditions uh, there. And the impact that has really is that it's likely to be drier than average across many western parts and wetter than average further east. Again, the caveat with these north and northeasterlies is the closer you are to the coast, the more likely you are of seeing a few showers develop um, and, and that kind of thing. So one to bear in mind, it will be generally drier than average for, for us, but 
coastal parts could see quite a few showers. And you can see here the temperature normally cooler than average in, in western parts with high pressure to the east, uh, west still bringing a cooler flow of northerly air and then milder uh, than average further east. The following week continues fairly similar. We still have this anomaly for high pressure out to the west or northwest of us, still bringing cooler air from the north or northeast um, with unsettled conditions across central parts, perhaps some ridging further southeast, which might bring some drier than normal weather down here uh, to Balkans, Turkey, those sorts of areas. Um, and with the high pressure here, likely many places will see not too much rain, drier than average generally, but wetter than average in these central parts. And the temperature signal looks fairly similar to the previous week. Wet, um, cooler than normal conditions for Western Europe um, in that north or northeasterly flow, and then slightly milder conditions for Eastern Europe. So to summarise, it's going to be very mild this week with heavy rain for many places, particularly across the high ground of Wales or Cumbria, where we could see close to 100 to 150 millimetres of rain, perhaps in some places locally. It will turn cooler, cooler as we go into the weekend and particularly into next week um, with showers and the potential for some quite frosty mornings in places. And then for the rest of the ne November, likely remaining cool, generally a little bit drier the further inland you are, but still with a few showers in places. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast for the UK and East Anglia on our social media, and you can leave any comments that you like below. Thanks for watching.